How you doing? This is Alan Peters of the Peters Design Company, and I'm here uh, to introduce Ben Jenkins. This is a part two uh, of a two-part interview. Uh, if you want to see part one, it's yesterday. Uh, part two here is all show and tell. He's going to show you all the beautiful things that they've made for Warstick, things they are making, the all the mock-ups and everything that the, he has rendered up for uh, the, the new headquarters. That it has it has like a batting cage. Um, it has a, like a whole showroom. It's beautiful. So sit back and enjoy. Um, these are nice and long. I, I did not rush Ben through any of this, and they're both 45 minutes each. And that's because he just he's a nice guy to talk to. And honestly, I just wanted to find out more and more info about like what he's doing, man, because this guy is so inspiring. And here's Ben. Um, Ben. So Alan. you 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 told me about you. So they they know who you are. Um, you, uh, you we learned about War Stick. Um, yeah, we've we've kind of covered uh, you know like a little bit of inspirational about like starting your own brand and stuff like that. If you can, and if it's possible, I I have a whole bunch. Of, I, I like I I'd send you questions like oh we could do this and that and you know what I think people would love. We're designers. We like pretty pictures. How about some show and tell? How about you just show them like, like I know you had a bunch of bats in the room with you. Like I know yeah. you had maybe had some images and stuff like that. Anything you want to show or share? I think people just would love yeah. just to, to see all that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens since we're on a screen here. I think it's okay. But like the classic, uh, you know, the, the product we started selling seven years ago is a wood baseball bat, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not a lot of people in the world that use these things. Only really serious baseball players because everybody plays with metal bats, right? So for those first four or five years before we got like our investors and took this seriously, it was just this. You would get on the site. You would pick a couple colors and a size. We, would, My partner manufacturer would make it and they'd mail it to you. It was a great little drop ship business. So that's, that's what this thing was founded and built on, right? Mm -hmm. Just that. But I, did, I agree with you. It's not so much that I'm a great designer. It's that in baseball and sporting goods, eh, <laughs> just not. Yeah. They they really like to copy each other, and like it's almost like there's an addicted look to sporting goods, mm -hmm. as if there's some kind of rule book. And I'm like, there's no rule book. Mm -hmm. And again, I had nothing to lose here, so I'm all talk because I'm like, I never expected to sell a single one. Yeah. That's your basic thing, but then what what happened? <laughs> when we decided to do this for real is we started making metal baseball bats. Nice. Which is a whole different ball game of manufacturing and overseas development and Skype calls in the middle of the night and giant minimums and it's big boy stuff. It's mm -hmm. big boy stuff. But creatively, I was like, wait a minute. I mean, I get that the bats are, the wood bats are kind of artisanal and designers tend to like that, but if you think about it, I mean, I can only do so much on a wood bat. It's paint and stain and stickers and mm -hmm. well, this, this is think of like like think of a car wrap. Yeah. So think of all the opportunities within that compared to, um, you know, a wood bat. Like, mm -hmm. like I can do some pretty crazy stuff. Um, and so that was that. I mean, but it wasn't that, I mean, it was easy to make cool looking designs. What was hard was the 979 sky calls in the middle of the night to find manufacturing in Asia and for them to take us seriously and to do it. I mean, that, that's the entrepreneur grinder part that now is done. And it's like, okay, now I get to make things like, um, I'm going to freak you out right now. Is that a snowboard? The whole no, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> what? And then it's got. Oh, nice. Oh, and I just want to point out, I didn't point. So two things I, I, I didn't point out in my video that I did the other day. One, you had the shirt with the double words where it said, I think it's hit within, within the other word, which I, I didn't <laughs> notice at first glance. I was looking at the opposite. I, know I could tell you didn't know. I was like, he's not seeing it yet. <laughs> I, I, I saw right the moment I like hit stop on the video. That, and then uh, the other thing was the, um, the typography in, in the, your hat that you sent me that had the patch on it. And then also you had just had it, you know, the, uh, on the bottom of that snowboard, uh, using the double inline typography where you're, you know, you're borrowing directly from the icon. 
I love, I love yeah. when you take the geometry of a mark and you apply it to the typography, apply yeah, to the like that's, icon. This isn't the official, this has kind of become like a, a cousin logo that we use a lot. Yeah. But it kind of like, where is it? See the, the war strikes oh, yeah. in there, right? It's yeah, it is. That little guy. And then I love that you named it the War Stripes too. That like that you have a name for your icon. That is so awesome. Well, <laughs> every, I mean, every good mark should have when a you're name. talking to your internal staff and they're they have to know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what is this thing? Like our symbol, you know, it's like um, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is like these are our new actually retail tags because we're in like the big, you know, dick sporting nice. goods now and all that. And then like just oh. the and you know, I'm trying to appreciate like just the fact that I have goods to put something like this on is it's a good feeling you know yeah. and then um let's see well, is uh, that new that you guys are in dicks how, how recently is that um it That's launched huge. four weeks ago because we built uh, <laughs> i working with clients i saw a lot of they built themselves on retail relationships and they became beholding to those retail relationships and they had to all their creativity was what they wanted not what the retailer wanted, not them. So mm -hmm. I was pretty bullheaded in terms of like, I'm gonna build an art, I'm gonna build War Stick as a direct consumer brand, build a real audience and a real following, take our time about that. And someday, if we do a good job, the retailers will come. I will never call one. I'm not saying I didn't start to think about it. <laughs> because it's like, all right, what do we gotta do here, man? Like I know people know who we are. I know mm -hmm. that this and then Again, this is why I say for some reason I thrive in wars and pandemics and stuff. Yeah, we were doing good. Our our direct to consumer audience is amazing, and it's it's as good as any of our competitors. But we lack the retail part. So all of a sudden, January, February, we start getting calls from the big five. We call them, you know, the the big thing, and and one of them in particular, the biggest one. <clears throat> I won't say names was very much like hey this is so and so and we've been hearing about war stick and um and he literally said you know we were wondering why you haven't called us and i was like <laughs> i was like i haven't thought of it and i go my i'm focused on just building this thing man and yeah. um and the good thing is all of a sudden they all kind of started calling at the same time and we started saying yes selectively to the right ones because as long as they felt like they really believed in it like we did, and they were going to let us keep harnessing our creativity. And so mm -hmm. it's funny, in COVID, a lot of companies who built on retail are trying to do what we'd already done, which is have the direct consumer online business. So we're having our best year ever. I was, I'm not going to lie, in March, I was freaked out. Baseball was shut down and everything, but it's been, yeah. it's, it's, it's been, it's been a good year. I've got, you know, I'm finally kind of living the dream of, I love baseball, always will, but I've, I've always wanted to get into uh, girls' fast pitch softball, which is amazing. A whole new species of people, I call them. I don't know. Just, I, they're, they're girls that deserve this. They're as tough as nails, man, and they, they, they're freaking warriors, man. And I'm like, I watch these girls' fast pitch players. I'm like, dude, these, these girls ball out. Like, they're badass. I can't wait to build stuff for them. So that's really close. Um, these are really close. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. These aren't. These are lacrosse sticks. Nice. So those, and this is, I like about this. This is a new. This is a totally new industry for us. So I'm not going to do crazy designs on these. I'm going to let the name ride. This mm -hmm. is about introducing. I mean, this looks almost just like your hat, right? You could yeah. walk in with this stick, just dress as you are, and you're ready to go. Yeah. Because I'm like, if the basic thing doesn't work, it's not going to work anyway. So I'm not going to try to over design in a new industry um at all and then sorry, so many things and then uh is like, that longboard custom that you have behind you that's not a war stick is it oh yeah yeah <laughs> forgive me if you already showed it i mean i can't have i have surfboards online the snowboards yeah this is a longboard oh, that's nice if it's if i can if i could in a slang use call it a stick it's in play mm -hmm. this is my uh i mean this is the thing that i'm personally most excited about would be um four stick fly rods we started pre-selling i don't know how much you can see i can see it 
It's very clean. No, it's like the same as the the um the lacrosse stick really is just keeping it simple and clean and letting the name mm -hmm. do its magic, you know, and then a little spin on it like we did. Um see if I have it here. My dad got really bit. excited. He, he, he was he was bit. watched the first video and he's like did you, did, you, did you just say fly fishing? <laughs> it got stoked. So, um, so, yeah, we did. They actually, the last section, it comes with two sections at the end. So you can interchange them. One is more slinky and finesse, one more power. And I made this one's the, the tip is red and orange, which I've never seen anybody do in fly fishing. It's a little mm -hmm. loud for fly fishing, but it's, I'm trying to turn fly fishing into a, like an active sport, not a like, old fat white guy sitting in a fishing hole. Like when I fly fish, I walk nine miles. I'm like on the hunt, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. this is actually an, a little bitty innovation that as far as like the retailers are concerned, they're like, oh, you're giving us something to talk about as, as to why you might you consider this ride. And I'm like, yeah. And so I'm nice. super excited about that one. But I'm, ter I'm, I'm definitely in the evolution part of turning war stick, maybe, we'll see from a, baseball a stick brand a baseball bat stick brand for warriors to a stick brand for warriors so they're applying that mentality because i figured if i was a crappy minor league hockey player this would have been a hockey brand from the beginning so why not but i just try to bring all those guys together you know how these sporting good brands they separate it like you got nike baseball nike hockey nike this and they separate those worlds i'm like i want to bring all those guys together at the same table like yeah I don't watch Avengers, but I assume like Avengers, you know, like we got all these guys with, they're all warriors, but I like have this stick and you have this stick and yeah. So we'll see, but I make them stuff regardless. And then we'll just see, but I have a lot better idea about how to get the word out about that. And mm -hmm. we know how the brand tips, right? So new sport. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But we're not stopping baseball. I'm going to keep doing baseball, man. Nice. What were we talking about? That would, I was just saying show and tell, you know, like I know you had some Im images. You could send me those photos so I'll, I'll just, I'll, I can just post them. You know, basically when I post a video, maybe I'll promote it on stories with a bunch of photos of, of different products and stuff like that. The coolest insider secret stuff I could show you would be a quick couple of renders of the, um, the new headquarters that no one's seen if you want. Yes, yes, the screen share, do okay. that. Uh, I figured if I was gonna show anything, um, just don't tell Jack, my business partner. Nice. Okay, so we bought we bought this building a couple of years ago, and we had to build the business big enough to do anything with it because it's so expensive. But is that the one that had the curved corner that you had the stripes wrapping around the corner? Yeah, and I don't no, have a picture I, of the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was amazing. Like I love that you wrapped the logo around the corner of the building. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's so brilliant. That was like that was when I was excited the first day, and then I'm like, oh, this is real work. We have to really build this. From, yeah. This is a 1941 building that we had to build from scratch. So like mm -hmm. this section of the building is a batting cage that's completely built from scratch and attached to the building. It's got its own patio. So um, this is the inside. So it's like, I think going to be the coolest batting cage in America. It's not, it's not multiple cages, but for a single cage, like it's got all these windows open. It's two stories high. All the nets are going to come and fill up the room. And then in the same building, you've got your retail. Um, I got to design like my own showroom, which for me, nice. that's what's so, that's what I mean by immersive is like, if you had a client, it would be pretty tough to get the job of like designing the brand, then the product, then the showroom mm -hmm. the headquarters, right? Mm -hmm. and where I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'm, I should appreciate this shit. <laughs> so like, and I'm, this is funny. Like I've spent most of my time, of course, on how I'm gonna stain the cabinets. So this just got finished yesterday. Nice. And it's like, I don't think you understand. Well, you can, how much I obsessed about getting this right. Oh, no, I, especially a grade, a gradients to make it you gradient, can easily yeah. make a gradient look like garbage. And most gradients do look like garbage. Yeah. But if you do it right, if you do it tastefully, it can be so beautiful. I think they, they feel like movement to me. And I feel when I look at nature and animals and stuff, mm -hmm. they have that. Like they have these lights and darks and mid-tones and all this kind of stuff and i think it's oh, yeah you know but it's like yeah these are all our best bat stains put together into one thing basically because that color that color that color and that color that's our four most popular yeah i was like 
I don't know. I think it's it brings my business partner Jack into it because it's also kind of have the feel of like a uh, like a sunburst guitar a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it does uh, have a little bit of feel. There's a reason why pe millions of people take photos of the sky at sunset every single day. Exactly, it's beautiful. You know, and, oh, and the idea is the showroom is going to have the the gradient's going to go down, and I feel nice. like it's like a nighttime kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then my cafe next to it, I have a coffee shop. I have my own. This is actually my dream all this time is to have my own freaking coffee shop. So nice. <laughs> this cafe sits between the showroom and the batting cage. And I'm going to do the gradient going up and into the white walls. And it's just have a little bit more daytime feel. Plus, yeah. I can't make up my mind which one I like better. So it gets me off the hook for deciding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we've got crazy. This is literally like two days ago. This is my one of my business partners, Jack. He, yeah. he's actually an upholsterer of all things. On top Is he? Of, I had no idea. World famous, iconic rock, rock star. He's an upholsterer. Yeah. So he built this chair. He bought this old, like 80 year old chair and reupholstered the whole thing and invented the warrior's chair. Nice. <laughs> like when you have an appointment to get fitted for your bat, you get your own parking spot and then you get to come in and you get to sit in this chair. And then, I mean, it's insane. Like there's a compartment inside this where he put all kinds of incense that he formulated that he thinks smells like war sticks. So when you sit in the chair, you get this whiff of it. It's insane. Yeah. He gave me a Buffalo. Uh, oh, wow. That's going to be in the middle of the showroom. Um, that's awesome. No reason at all. And then oh, I've got this. Yeah. Like, and it's, I think the stores too, where we get to do. Is that Eddie Vedder? Yeah, this is my Eddie Vedder baseball. That's awesome. Um, Eddie, it, like I've, some cool friends only because of Jack has cool friends. And then they, this is, and then of those friends who really love baseball, he shares mm -hmm. this with them. And then it's, it's fun. It's Eddie awesome. used to sing to me on, on my tape deck yeah. when I washed dishes at the, the VA hospital canteen mm -hmm. when I was 16 years old. I, I would, verses and then uh, what's, yeah, what's yeah. the one before that? Is it Alive or those, those, alive those two albums? Yeah, I, I listen to those on repeat pretty much. Those and, and oh, yeah. Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> it's definitely surreal. I mean, I, again, I'm trying to, I try to, it is weird. I can tell you that like the last four years doing these things and then meeting Jack, which was yeah. very surreal. It normalizes, you know, like Jack is maybe one of the coolest guys in the world, the most creative people I've ever seen, let alone mm -hmm. met. But he's also a human being and a nice, normal person who tells horrible dad jokes, you know? And <laughs> good. <laughs> you learn that the humanity's there and stuff. And it's like, I, but, it, but it's still like, yeah, I mean, uh, I got to make Eddie better. Um, I mean, he started wearing the battle shirt in concert. Like, we're like, what, what's happening? You know? And it's just nice. like, it's, it's pretty cool. And then uh, Jack's like, well, you know, I'm playing, this is Jack World. Like, well, we're playing our last show this year in Hawaii. I don't know, you want to come and I don't know what else could we do? I mean, he's, I'm like, I don't know who's going to be there. He's like, well, I know the betters are going to be there. And I'm like, oh, the betters, huh? Yeah, I mean, well, I was like, Eddie loves surfing. I'm making more stick surfboards. Why don't we make him a surfboard? It's like, yeah, let's do it. So we do it. Then we have a great, we have dinner with the betters and we give him a surfboard and he gives me a million Eddie better hugs. And it's just, I mean, it's definitely, I don't know, man. It's, I just try not to ruin it. Um, but it's, it's not about, it's, it's a little more doable because it's not like they're meeting me. They're, they see this thing. They, they, this is what they think is so cool. And I'm kind of attached to it, but it's like, I don't know. It, it, again, it, I think it just goes to like, none of that special kind of stuff came out of doing client work for me. I had some cool stuff. And I've made a lot of people a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Brands that have sold for millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. but I don't know like I don't know I'm gonna take I like the client stuff I think I'm gonna take it in doses now yeah. like I'm doing actually on the same board I just did this look at I did real not war stick design that's pretty so I did this uh Christine and I these people came a month ago it's been fast like hey we've got a mezcal we have no idea what to call it we have mm -hmm. no idea what it looks like we've seen your alcohol branding work we're like this is cool we're in we do it mm -hmm. and figure out the name Unidos, I can't say it as good as the guys who run this thing. Like um, it. Basically means unity, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I take these things and I sit down and I do them. Like I, 
and I, I don't care how long, if they think I spent a long time on it, cool. If they don't, cool. They love it. That's all that yeah. matters. I did this in like, there's like two or three hours of sitting down and just letting it come out. And then it's like, I appreciate that, man. Cause I don't have to run this brand. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like it's a, you know, this is just something really nice. It's a great way to make a living, man. Yeah. You is. know? So I, I, I think I appreciate it too much. And just the creative flexibility to get out of, out of my worst mindset a little bit is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not going to go try to grow it or, I like doing that. The thing I like about OFB is the work. I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. So anyway, it's kind of like, it's like the whole thing. It's like, will you ever retire as a designer? You're like, I don't know. I'd be bored if I wasn't designing. Man, like my wife, she, she's like, she's like, Alan, if you don't have enough, like when I'm slow and I don't have any projects going on, she's like, just like do something cheap for somebody. Just do something. You're driving me crazy. Um, well, <laughs> cause to, I gotta make stuff. I mean, just honestly, Alan, watching you try to set up this podcast, like you have a hyper obsessive perfectionist thing. You have the entrepreneur craziness to do it. So if you have some extra time, you should try it. Just, yeah. but you gotta, you gotta search for the idea that you believe that. Yeah, that's key. You know, that's the thing. But some designers, I don't think you have to have the crazy part. It's not just being a good designer. In fact, I'd say some, it might be some designers are such just a good designer. They never can see outside that box to do the other stuff that they would have to do to, mm-hmm. to make a brand, you know? I'm, I'm just like a, I don't know, I'm a hack, I'm, a, I'm an okay designer with a much more, uh, I don't know, I love all the facets of creativity, to be honest, yeah. and that I get to do like probably, can I show you one more thing? Yeah, show me, I, I don't care if this is like three hours long. Let's okay. Keep, let's keep, keep going. I don't, you know what's <laughs> cool about this is like, this is one of the only times I ever stopped working. Yeah. So let me see if I can pull this up. I pulled a couple. I realized I was like, what's the coolest, most fun, creative project I've done mm-hmm. at Warstick? And I was like, I think it's this. Because I never would have got to do this, which was, can you see this okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was like, okay, we've got money. We we got like a million dollars in investment money nice. four years ago to do things with that I could never do. Now, I remember my journey was, I actually, at one point, I was in grad school thinking, I want to be a filmmaker, but I was such a designer, I started freelancing, and I just kind of didn't do it, and I was like, hey, I want to make, I want to do something really badass, that's Mm -hmm. exactly what I want to make, so this is my one chance to conjure up a film, it's only, it's not long, so don't worry, oh, you know what? I think I've seen, I I think I still watched it once, a while ago, but I, I want to see it again. It's actually, um. Let me get the let me get the best. There's there's a couple different versions. Oh, we need the long. There we go. Director's cut. Yeah. Can you see it? I can't tell. Can you see it? Okay. Is it better? Go full screen. Down? Yeah, go full screen. Let's okay. see the whole thing. Yes. All right. Here we go. In the stillness of the game, in the vastness of the mind. Our faith is challenged. Our faith is clear. Only the hunter's focus brings sight. awesome so good most fun thing i've done but also hard like mm-hmm. oh, wait so you see the new collaboration oh, um uh, where'd you go there you yeah but like i mean it's not a film it's a one minute film but i was like let's make an epic war movie in 60 seconds and what would that be that is the heart and soul of what war stick is yeah nothing like what it, i mean the competitors i don't even know what they would thing now they've done better stuff since because they're like yeah. hey, we got to try harder but yeah, it was yeah. cool, like seeing something like that like i made that for baseball players right and it's like i know what it means to be 
fired up to hit versus scared to hit. Mm-hmm. And so like one time I was at the Detroit Tigers game pregame with Jack and Ian. Mm-hmm. You know who Miguel Cabrera is? Yeah. Easily one of the best hitters of our generation. Hall of Fame. I mean, insane professional godlike hitter. Mm-hmm. And he knew who I was at this point because Ian was playing on his team and he's like, hey man, come here. And uh, he's a he's a huge guy. He's like six five, two hundred. He's huge. Mm-hmm. And he just goes, he's he's got his bat and he's like, I watched the video. And I was like, Oh, really? He goes, Yeah, I saw the video. So uh I'm now ready to hit. And he just walked off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <was> like, yeah. <laughs> I can fire Miggy up. Maybe it's cool. Cause it's like yeah. the thing, like you kind of have to feel the baseball hitter thing in there to know what that means and all but like yeah it's just been cool like that's again that's why i'm taking the moving past the client relationship to like we're this is what we want to make like it costs a lot of money Mm -hmm. you're making those decisions and you're the one green lighting it you know and you're green lighting yourself and you're like i don't know this might be dumb to make but like it's a good people run into that when they run into the brand like they're gonna find that thing you know yeah and they either repelled by it or love it which i love you know i think it's one of the two so that's that i i just I, that that spot it the, 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 the video it, it it tells such a nice story i mean you have the the picking the weapon the war stick mm-hmm. you know go into battle it has the the, the pitch and the arrow and and, and the weapon and it, it, it tells a story of, you know, like the intensity, that, that visceral intensity of going to battle, like that, that passion. And it's, and it's hard to capture that, especially in one minute, to get to the point where you're just like, yeah, I want, <laughs> ready to hit the ball. I know, you, you, you finished with, like, I was the one with, like, I had multiple, I had a great crew called Farm League who does epic stuff that, for Patagonia that I could never afford, but they were like, yeah. This is cool. We know Jack's involved. Jack wrote that music, by the way, which you don't get because that would cost like two million dollars. So I mean, awesome. we have that he scored it, and it's like, and I had a native director who's an amazing filmmaker named uh, Sterling Harjo. But like, it was, it was three of us, and it's like, I'm crazy. He's crazy. Like, it was tough, man. Like, many conversations of like, should it be this? Should it be that? Well, what about this? What about that? And if you pick apart the little details, of like, I was obsessed with having that rusty colored orange um like the one you see in the stains like i'm still obsessed with that brown orange like i had to have each character have that incorporated into them just Mm -hmm. dumb things you know but i'm like it's not dumb i'm just saying like well it's designers get it but it's like you know what's worth doing and what's not but like um well you remember when target like when they did the sign the time spot like back in the like late 90s or 90s or whatever pmh did that where it was like the first one that had bulls by the dog and the bull and all the that heavy branding and it was just like a good song and, and a lot of bullseyes and it wasn't selling any products. And it was one of the first times that was really done well. And I don't, I don't think anybody's really even doing that hardly anymore. Even a brand like Target, they're, they're still, they're just like selling merch now, just like two ninety nine, three ninety nine, yeah. or whatever. They're, they're, they're selling a bunch of products where for you to go in there, bold as can be and just say like, Here's the brand, you know, like, yes, there are some products in there, but it's, it's not like it's like beautiful mm-hmm. products right. displayed. You're just yeah. seeing like a little gradient, like. Clip we almost forgot to put the products at the end. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't, mm-hmm. we're so obsessed with like, what's the feel of War Stick that yeah. you, when I watch that film still, because I'm connect to it, like I get fired up in here, you know, like I can feel mm-hmm. it. But the goal of it was to just, in, like our mission, which was clarified, we knew what it was, but it's like, our mission is to inspire hitters to attack the ball. Yeah. That's, that's what we're trying to do. And so I feel like that film, you know, that's my job is to connect these things that we do to the mission, not be all over the place, but like mm-hmm. do it in interesting things and then find new ways to do it. But I think it does. It. And um, yeah, but I think that's, I mean, again, working with Jack, that's the thing. If you really look at Jack White, you look at the branding of the white stripes you talk about a branding project oh my god genius all the, the, the only two colors the red white only only two people in the band mm-hmm. he's a branding genius again without even knowing or thinking about it and then third man records and just it's his attention to detail it's a, he, he's one of the only people that makes me feel a little normal 
with my obsessive nature about all the little details because he's 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 way beyond and obviously way more successful and famous and all this stuff but like mm -hmm. i wake up every day when i when i did this i was like when i took on jack as an investor i'm like this is a is he gonna i don't know i mean he was like look i won't step on your toes i mean i love design and stuff and i was like dude it's okay step on my toes i mean i'm getting to work with you right and yeah. but i realized the thing is like it gets me up every day trying to keep up with jack yeah i'll never catch jack but he's my rabbit you know what i mean yeah he's, that's good it's good rabbit. to have that yeah you know, like they, they always say like if you're hiring people for a company hire the people better than you so that you're inspired and so pushes to make you better and and you know bringing on jack you know like you, you guys working together i mean that's just gonna if you bring on people, you know, that, that inspire you, they push you to go further. You're just going to make a better product in the end. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it was a way to build in. I needed the support and the money mm -hmm. and they're so supportive, but it was also that creative people were like, why would you work with a, why would you put a baseball bat guy with a famous rock star? And I'm like, it's not, it's because he's a famous artist, not because he's a rock star yeah. because he's better than me. And he's, it's just that uh, he inspires me. And I'm like, I need, it'll give me juice every day to wake up and do it. And it's been, that part of it's been true every day. Well, uh, the, the, over, the overlap that you guys have is the love of baseball. Yeah. I mean, it, I've seen oh, so yeah, many shots of you guys all playing together and stuff. We love, we love design. We love baseball. We love mm -hmm. war. We love fight. He's a, he's a Detroit. I mean, he's just a, he's a baller guy, man. Like all yeah. three, like not all three, but I mean, they're all, Ian has that same mentality. I mean, it's just like, there, you, it's dangerous. If we went into a bar together, it would not be maybe a good thing because we make it fun. not with each other, but with someone else. Because it's just yeah. we're competitive people, but they're all really amazingly good people. Yeah. But Plus, they, you guys probably carry around baseball bats, so I mean that's, that's yeah. Like, no one's gonna care. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm I'm not gonna keep you all day because I know you got lots going on. Alan, I mean, we. I've decided I don't want to work today anymore. I well. Oh. I'm fine. I, I, I got, like I said, War Six doing so well now that it's like, I got an operations guy named Mike that came from, he's awesome, man. He's, he's got it. I'm nice. getting more of this every day. They're like, they're like, boss, we got it. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm trying to absorb that and be okay with it. Like I'm, yeah. I'm you know, I, I can, I can not work with the best of them when I, when I decide, but yeah. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, you're not taking up my time. You just, when you get bored, you stop. That's it. Going into these big, these big shops being carried at Dick's and, and the, I mean, the, you guys, that's uh, my guess. What, what I'm, I'm assuming is I'm going to look back on this in 10 years. You're going to be like Under Armour level gigantic. And I'll be like, did you see that video I did with Ben Jenkins? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I know him kind of. You say that, but it's like, well, it's not, you know, it's the classic like, oh, overnight success story. I'm like, yeah, nine, eight. I'm going on eight, nine years of this now yeah so, it always looks like overnight success from I mean, from, from away from away i mean i heard uh actually dix was doing some videos about it like or someone one of our retailers like yeah kind of the cool new guy on his block and i'm like what I'm like <laughs> they're doing this forever but it's the world's big right you don't you don't realize how big the world is out there and awareness is just incredibly it's not 1950. Sometimes I wish I could teleport back to 1950 with three television stations, a million dollars, and a badass commercial and go, everybody knows about me. But now yeah. it's like easier to start a brand because you can do it. You can put things out. You can promote yourself. But our attention is divided into a million pieces of you know, all the different Instagram accounts. So mm -hmm. attention in my mind is actually harder than ever to gain traction on. Yeah. You know? And so it's... I think that is why as a brand with you working with your clients, you need to tell them, look, stop trying to be all things to all people. Stop trying to make everyone like you be really specific in who you are and be okay with some people that you repel. That is a good sign. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just is that way now. It's like, doing, you know, it's unless you're doing a new social media channel, you're probably not going to be Patagonia or someone that, you know, yeah. like, um, it's it's tough man honestly it, it's it's like empowering that we have all these tools we can promote ourselves but it's like oh you don't realize how really big the world is until you find out mm. uh -huh. true that's yeah. true man so um so 
let's say these people out there want to want to get in touch. Speaking of social media, you know, where, where can they find you? Where can they find Warstick? Um, is is it just it, it, Warstick with with a C? Just so everybody knows, not. We're gonna say the main trick is spelling it right. Yeah, because it doesn't have a K, and that's that's the genius part about it. Because if mm -hmm. I if I would have put a K on it, if the client would have made me put a K on it, it wouldn't be a great name. No. It's a new word now, right? So, oh yeah, it's just if Instagram account, we, we, uh, it's one of those things you never feel like you're doing enough, but um, mm -hmm. Instagram accounts uh, really the best place, but our Facebook, you know, we have two audiences. We have kids who buy our stuff. Mm -hmm. We have the parents who buy it for them. The mm -hmm. parents are on Facebook. So we have to have a conversation over there with parents more. Oh, right. Instagram. <laughs> like my, my core audience over there is kind of like, I mean, it's kids who are 8, 9, 10, 14, 16, 18. That's the core audience, man. Some kids, mm -hmm. and that, you know, and major league players and stuff like that. But then on Facebook, it's totally different. I'm talking to their parents. Yeah. You know? so the, yeah. If you just, yeah, just go to warstick.com and then, you know, all our socials are down there. And um, nice. the site, honestly, the site is probably the best. Like, you can get around and dig through the blog and just see all the, there's so many cool things that we've done in terms of like Sandlot games and, um, you know, some of our charity projects where we're building a baseball field in South Dakota. Um, there's all kinds of things to dig into, you know, cool. get the products or whatever. And all yeah. that stuff. So. It really helps me most if you buy the products, though. Mm -hmm. um, I should have made like a little discount code for you to give the design crowd. Maybe we could do that if you post this. Maybe yeah, maybe. I'll, be, I'll be posting this in a day or two, so we, we can do that. I can I, I can post it with a discount code if if you want. For, uh, it's for a one point five percent off. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like that's like my promotion. Hey, I did one for Black Friday. I was like. 10% off if you spend over a hundred dollars. I'm like, that is such a lame, I should, I should have given them more off. I, I felt like such a In my business and anybody's where you're selling goods, like it is crazy from the Black Friday thing on how much of your year is just, it's just, it's, it's great. Yeah. But we have a high margin. These metal bats are very, very, very high margin goods. So we, for us, it's great because we can discount 20% and it's great. Yeah. It helps them and it, it's great. I mean, that's, Part of that's why I say be careful when you start a brand. What you're think about the product. Think I got lucky. Think about the product. How much does it cost to make you? How much mm -hmm. can you sell it for? Like you should think of those things out. Absolutely. That's why my snowboard company started. That I when I when I I started a snowboard company the same day I started Warstick. Have you ever heard yeah. of it? No. <laughs> <laughs> because they were made in France and they were so expensive. There was like two guys on the planet that could afford them. Because I didn't think about that. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't think that through. So. so who's uh, you're making snowboards now for Warstick though, right? So yeah, same Warstick, guys, like really really expensive French ones. Actually, uh, the French guys they were making by hand, and they used a manufacturer for their stock boards, which are more run of the mill. Mm -hmm. And I had that contact from back then, and I was like, wait, I think I know someone who makes this. And then, but you know, once you're into manufacturing the real stuff, it's hard to start. But once you're into it. Every manufacturer knows someone who knows someone who knows someone, and you start. Yeah. It kind of it kind of spider webs out, and so, and then you know some of these manufacturers make multiple things. So mm -hmm. turns out my metal bat manufacturer is also a great lacrosse manufacturer. So bingo, mm -hmm. so the relationships already there, and it's like I already know how to work with Ken and Jeff and this, and it's like go. So it, it gets easier as you go. It's just harder to start. So, yep. Awesome. I have learned so much today. I, I'm, I'm so oh, happy yeah, that, that, that you took the time. Anything. You didn't learn anything. I, I did. Well, I got it. I, I got inspired for sure. I, I got, in, I, I got pumped up. I learned about you and, and I, I, I'm, I kind, of, kind of, it just reinforced a lot of what's been going through my head and what I've been talking about with Maria, my business partner slash wife. Um, we've been, we've been really talking about like next, next slower period of just, taking some time and really just go in like strategic level the same way we, cause, cause we do that all the time for clients, especially when we're doing naming, you know, we get down and we, we just really come up with like overall theme target market, you know, overall, like, like what would it sound like? What would it feel like? What kind of materials would you use if you're building a space, 
You know, what kind of person would it be if, if it walked into a bar? Like all those kinds of things. Yeah. And, and, and really start to sculpt from the base and, and um, start off a, a, a pure, like pure target market that we know who it is. Mm -hmm. uh, in, innovative idea, you know, they, these, these- I mean, it is really like a science project, you know? And it's funny, yeah. Warstick's good proof that I know what I'm doing and me and Christine know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because clients sure listen to us a lot more now than they did 10 years ago. But it's not because of OFB. Well, I, some of those brands that we've done have done really well, but yeah. that's not all credit to us. But like when Warstick, when you can say, hey, we, we do this, they mm -hmm. listen to you, you know? And it's like, we should do a, we should do this with Christine on and really don't talk about Warstick, talk about branding, talk about clients, talk about what they need from yeah. you, how to lead them versus lit, like just take orders from them. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have a ton of opinions on that that we never share because we just don't take the time to participate enough. That's why I got to do things like this sometimes, but it would be, I would love to talk about, I mean, I am fine talking about Warstick, but I feel like, you know, I need to, there might be cool things we could talk about to help designers and thinkers and creative people out there, like with their clients. You know, I got, I got, I mean, I, I know a lot. I'm old, you know, and yeah. Christine's way smarter than me. Christine's way smarter than me. So like we planned it when we open that batting cage, that's going to be a speaking center. We've got a stage that comes down almost like do our own little Ted style talks. Now we'll do a lot of baseball and mentality talks and this and that clinics yeah. but i want to do creative stuff too like i want to have you in have Draplin oh, in have like i want to do my own version of that maybe it's mm -hmm. not i don't want to try to create a creative conference but like i think it'd be cool if we did that kind of thing there so you're yeah. invited you're going to be one of the first speakers i would love to do that man I, that would be an honor I'm not paying you but you're going to get a badass bat and i'm just kidding I, I want I want to play in the batting cage. I want I want to I want to see that buffalo in person. I want to yes. sit on the scented chair. Yes. I, I want to you get the whole experience. It's not about money. <laughs> it's about the experience. And it's about that's the right. That you're sharing with the world. But we could. I think I think that's the thing too. Is like again the cool thing about getting old is you kind of like you know some ways and it's like I do need to stop sometimes and put some energy into sharing that. And so mm -hmm. that's that's the part that um, I love sharing my story. It's, it's there and people can learn from it, but I actually feel like we, not just meeting you, I feel like I need to go one step further sometimes and be like, like very advice, tangible advice driven stuff, you know what I mean? Kind of thing, so I don't know. But not about graphic design because I'm not good enough at it, but I can, I can fake my way through it pretty good. Dude, this, this is brilliant. That the market. dumbest, most successful logo I've ever, think about it. Do you think that took me a long time to do, Alan? I think it took a, a lifetime experience to get to that point. Of what not to do, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. So, anyway. It's a good mark, man. Well, this is fun, man. So, yeah. Yeah. thanks for having me. Wow, that was awesome. I'm so glad we had Ben on here. If you want to learn more about Warstick, uh, just check out W-A-R-S-T-I-C. There's no K in there. Oh, yeah, don't let me catch you putting a, a K in there. Seriously. No, um, <laughs> uh, this was a, a real pleasure. And uh, I hope to do more of these. If you can think of somebody that you think would be a good interview that you'd like to hear me talk to, whether it's about uh, starting a business, uh, being an entrepreneur, uh, it, you know, is there something you wanna hear me talk about? Do you have questions? Leave them below in the comments. Let me know, you know, I, I can make the best content I can possibly make if you tell me what it is that you want to hear. Hey, thanks a lot. Till next time.